Well, as Melanie said, it's awesome. Hi, I'm Dan Leslie. Welcome to our show this week. For all the new people that have just started watching our program, we're going to take you back and introduce you to our sport aviation program. And for all of you old timers that have been watching for a while, later on in our show, we're going to take you to the next level. Getting training, and at the end of the show, we'll even talk about building your own machine. You don't want to miss that. So don't go away. We're going to be right back right after this. Are you looking for something to just take you away from it all? Then come with us. We're going to show you how to spread your wings and get involved in something just for you. Welcome to the world of rotorcraft. This funny looking machine is called a gyrocopter and hundreds of people around the world are soaring into the skies to find a new kind of freedom with it. Actually, the gyrocopter isn't such a new thing after all. Dr. Igor Benson built the first gyrocopter back in the 1930s and pioneered the sport that so many of us enjoy today. Now there are many different kinds of gyroplanes and small helicopters in use. Sound like fun? Something you might enjoy? Home-built rotorcraft makes up the fastest growing segment of sport aviation today. Every year thousands of people are finding out how exciting it can be to fly home-built gyroplanes and helicopters. How can you get started in this incredible experience? First, it's not something you have to do alone. There's an organization called the Popular Rotorcraft Association, better known to its members as the PRA. Since 1962, the PRA has been coordinating flying events. These are some pictures from PRA magazines of the 60s and some of the action back then. The fun has always been there with the Popular Rotorcraft Association, but there's more to it. You must have the right kind of training to make it safe. The PRA maintains a current list of certified flight instructors to give you the proper training before you take off. You'll get to know these individuals as CFIs. The PRA is also your source for learning what's available on the market. The Popular Rotorcraft Association puts out a monthly magazine which has all sorts of articles on new products and services. You'll find out about the manufacturers of gyroplanes, engines, rotors, wheels, and everything you need to build your own craft. You'll also find videos and books available on how to build your own craft and fly it safely. So you stay on top of what's happening in the field. Some of the most enjoyable things about the PRA are the fly-ins. Some of them are national, like the Benson Days held every spring in Florida, and the national conventions held in the Midwest every summer. Others are regional. You can see these machines up close and check them out for yourself. But even more important than the machines, are the people that are in the PRA. You won't find a friendlier group anywhere. All of them anxious to help you learn more about this exciting sport. Well, we've talked enough about it for a while. Why don't we just take you to a fly-in and drop in on what's happening?
Well, just imagine you in the pilot's seat. You know, each week we get a lot of phone calls from viewers just like yourself that are asking some very simple questions, and right now I'd like to try to answer a few of those. Probably the most asked question is, can I fly this from my backyard? The gyroplane and most of the ultralights can operate in and out of short strips, but unless you have at least 500 to 1,000 feet, I wouldn't even consider operating out of my own backyard. Uh, even though you can land the gyroplane in most of these aircraft in a relatively short distance, the gyroplane can be landed in 100 feet or less consistently, uh, you're going to need more room to take off. They take off more like a conventional airplane, and depending on the style machine that you fly, the wind, the weather, and your weight, uh, it's going to take more room to take off, between 500 and 1,000 feet. So unless you have a very small area there, and I would recommend in that case you fly a helicopter, uh, you're going to need more room, uh, preferably a small local airport to operate the gyroplane in and out of. Uh, there uh, can be maneuvered in tight spaces, flown in tight spaces, but to be on the safe side, and I emphasize safe, you probably want to choose your local airport before you try to carve out your own grass strip at your own property. Now, the next question that is asked a lot is, uh, how high can I fly this machine? The world's record is over 18,000 feet held by Wing Commander Wallace in the United Kingdom. Uh, you might remember, he's the guy that uh, flew the gyroplane in the James Bond movie, You Only Live Twice. Uh, he is a charming gentleman and uh, has set all of the world's records. And if you want to go 18,000 feet, be my guest. Preferably, I like staying a little bit lower than that. But you can go just as high as you care to go on a gyroplane. Another question that is asked a lot is, how fast can I go? The typical gyroplane will cruise from about 50 to 75 miles per hour. There are some machines that will go faster, and some machines, uh, well, most all the machines actually can go that fast, but uh, unless you just really have to go somewhere in a hurry, and in those cases, I usually recommend getting in an airplane and go, expect to play around around 50 to 60 miles per hour. Good, comfortable cruising speed for you. Another question that is asked quite frequently is, do I need a license? Well, let's divide this into about three categories here if I can. Number one, if the gyroplane or aircraft weighs less than 254 pounds, it qualifies as an ultralight, and you do not have to have a license to fly that machine by yourself. If you're going to carry a passenger, you always have to have a license. If you are flying a machine that weighs more than 254 pounds, it is an experimental aircraft, and you do have to hold at least a student pilot's license, which is uh, gotten after you get training. Your flight instructor will sign your logbook and endorse your certificates for you to fly by yourself. There are certain restrictions, but you have to hold at least a student pilot's license. And beyond that, you can obtain a, a private pilot's license or a commercial rating or an instructor's rating where you can carry passengers and you can actually do training yourself. So on the front side, you don't have to have a license to get started, but you do need to get the training, and I can't emphasize that enough. And probably the last question that is asked more than anything else is, are they safe? Well, we're going to answer that just like this. Okay, now and here's the uh, sport copter. He stopped the prop and he's demonstrating an engine out landing. This is the question everybody has. What happens if the engine quits? Well, here's an example right here. You're going to see it right here in front of us. He's, look at him. He's waving like it's nothing to it. Floating down like a feather. The prop is stopped. All you hear is the rotor blades. And he brings it in. He does a nice gentle flare. And watch this. Wow, what a great job.